Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Construction Project Management Tips. Today we're going to be looking at bottlenecks versus constraints, something that we run into a lot. Sometimes we don't always recognize exactly what it is or what it means. And sometimes we also don't know what's the difference between the two. So we're going to unpack that, talk about what you can uh, think about when you're seeing it, how to identify it, and a few tips on how you can deal with it. As you know, in project management tips, we're always looking for ways that we can improve, ways that we can get better at what we do. How can we be smarter, better, faster at managing construction projects? The construction industry is rife with inefficiencies and problems, which is kind of good in a way because it means we can figure out ways to get better. Um, I'm not sitting here saying everybody's perfect out there and so you got to be perfect. We're far from it and we've got a long way to go, but let's go down that path together. Uh, if you don't know this channel by now, I'm a professor of construction management and I do a lot of consulting with very large construction uh, companies over the decades. And so I've learned a lot from the best and I'm hoping that I can help share some of those pointers with you and hopefully you can leave comments and share some of your stories back to me and your questions. All right, let's get started. So constraints versus bottlenecks, what's the difference, right? Like we'll, we'll, we'll unpack that as I said, but really when we think about effective project management, you know, we want to identify both and sometimes bottlenecks can be pretty easy to identify you see a big long lineup of something and that's causing what we refer to as a bottleneck the reason like at bottles like beer bottles they have it that it goes narrower there so you can control the flow so everything doesn't start pouring out but in construction projects we actually want the flow to go at a nice even pace and we don't want it to be going fast and then hit something and then it's like, oh, now we've got to wait. Oh, it's going to take some time. And so what is it then that causes that? And that's where we kind of get into the aspects of limitations and what kind of environment uh, that we're, we're working within. And so when you think about a constraint, like you could think about a football stadium and what's the maximum capacity. So you might have... 150,000 that want tickets uh, to the national one of the national championship bowls right and everybody wants tickets to it but the stadium is constrained to maybe 90,000 and you got 150,000 that would love to be there but you're constrained you're constrained to that number um, so that's something that we think about in construction projects when we think about uh, the time cost quality safety uh, triangle. You know, usually it's time, cost, quality, and there's that interaction that takes place. I'll talk about on the next slide a little bit. And I've talked about it before, but I think it's always worth talking about. Other constraints when we think about resources is, you know, the physical space. So we're constrained by how big is this space. You're constrained by your project, the site. What kind of space do we have on this site to lay down materials, to store things? Uh, all of where are we going to put our trailers, you know, the site logistics aspect, there's constraints. And so how do we deal with that? If we don't deal with them well, then what happens? We end up with bottlenecks and then we have a backlog. And so that's never a good thing. Uh, so trying to understand what are your constraints and we'll unpack some of these as well as we go along here. But that time, cost, quality, scope, you know, scope's what we got to do. We're constrained with time, we're constrained with cost, we're constrained with quality. If we fall behind on the time, then our costs tend to go up, our quality tends to go down. Uh, we might run into accidents. So there's interrelationships that take place as a result of constraints. Uh, and if we push those constraints without really thinking about them, then there's going to be negative side effects. And a negative side effect would be typically a bottleneck. So a college building project must be completed by the middle of August in preparation of the new school, school year. That's a constraint. That's like having managed a project, uh, one of our newer buildings with regards to our division. Uh, that was a big constraint. We've got all these students coming in September. What are we going to do with them, right? Uh, so huge constraint. Uh, it's not like we could easily say, oh, 
well, you know what, you can start the year six weeks later. No, that would have caused all kinds of ripple effects, funding effects, people leaving, not coming, that sort of thing. Client must stay within budget as it may be difficult for them to raise more capital. This is not an issue where, oh, uh, you know, there's extras on this. That's fine, but the client doesn't have the access to capital to pay for it. So they're really constrained on the money side of things. The quality expectation for the new microprocessor facility, I think there's kind of a renaissance going on right now uh, in the US and Canada with building some microprocessor uh, facilities. Um, high quality, you've got to have things really, really high quality, clean rooms, etc., that are operating at very, very tight parameters. Uh, if they don't, well, your chips are going to be useless. So that's why. Uh, so that's a constraint. Uh, the approval timeline for the change. So these are things, the last one here is things that are like third party authorities out of your control. Uh, so you're really constrained by them saying that you're not going to get a permit for four months and you need it sooner, but you can't really influence that. So those are constraints. You then have to work within that time frame. So bottleneck, as I said, it's really where the workflow is restricted, like the bottle and it basically it's holding the the flow of beer back if you will if you can visualize that a little bit better maybe um so you have a lower rate of output than the overall capacity of the system i always think about this uh photograph that i uh seen and i didn't use it here because i don't have the, the rights to it but it was an excellent photograph of going up mount everest like if you google uh, going up mount everest and bottleneck i think it'll come up and there's like this long line of people trying to get to the top of mount everest and so you're really constrained by the slowest person the slowest person is the constraint on that right you can't go fast because it was very narrow like to, you can't be running around people you're falling off the the mountain and mount everest if you're it's known that if you're not there by a certain time, I think it's 2, 2 p.m., if you're not at the peak by 2 p.m., there's a high chance that you're not going to make it down the mountain. More people die going down the mountain than up the mountain. Uh, so if, you, you know, if you're late at getting to the peak and you get there at like 3.30 p.m., the temperature drops really rapidly. You're almost out of oxygen and you, have, you, know, you pass away on the way down must be awful being stuck in a lineup trying to go to the top it's bad enough trying to go to the top of this mountain to begin with right never mind having that constraint in front of you that was a an error in at the time of the licensing that they they gave out of that particular year but they had a lot of deaths that particular year so constraints bottlenecks bottlenecks uh can occur due to various reasons limited resources uh, you don't have enough of something and so basically you're constrained with that and then that's causing a bottleneck behind you, right? Uh, excessive workloads, people getting tired, inefficient processes, uh, dependencies. Well, I'm dependent. I cannot do this unless the successor activity is done. So if that successor activity is not done, I'm dependent on it being done or I cannot go in there. And so that will then means I can't. And then anybody behind me on a construction project, they can't do what they need to do because I didn't do what I need to do. So you end up with this workers uh, waiting for work, right? So you end up with this workers waiting for work. Something's not uh, ready for them uh, aspect that we talk about in lean construction methodologies. So it's really, and sometimes bottlenecks those are pretty clear ones. Like you see a line up on Mount Everest. You see a line up at the bottom of a material hoist. It's pretty clear. It's not as clear when it's like this permit's taking longer or they didn't review this submittal fast enough. It's not like you see a whole bunch of people lined up. They're just not there because they can't do the work and nobody, nobody's uh, scheduled them to do the work or they've been told that it's not ready till we get this thing reviewed. All you can do is track those things on a schedule to try to make sure that um, it's represented, but prior to that, you could do everything in your power to try to make sure that that bottle, that basically constraint isn't uh, longer than expected, isn't uh, 
doing something that wasn't that you didn't expect to happen and then you could schedule so that the flow is more even towards that so sometimes it means you slow your flow down to even up with the amount that's going through on the bottleneck and so you're trying to sync these things because otherwise having a lot of people wait around is not a positive thing so when we think about can a constraint cause a bottleneck well yeah i just said it could right so basically a constraint can cause a, a bottleneck and you can think about it you know uh, the scenario where a specified material is constrained by availability due to contractual obligations it's a good example and so one of the examples i had from one of my clients was they were doing i think it was a senior's home and the specifications were for a terrazzo floor so terrazzo floor it's takes a lot of crafts, craftsmanship, uh, special equipment uh, to get this uh, set up. It lasts a really long time. And so this senior's home was specifying a terrazzo floor on the main floor. And in Toronto, where I live, there's not a lot of terrazzo trade partners. So there's not a lot of terrazzo trade partners and they're all crazy busy. And so the contractor was saying to the consultant, this is going to take us, you know, that we're going to be delayed because of this by about four months. And the consultant's like, well, that's not my problem because we've got the, you know, we want you to have this terrazzo floor. So that's a very clear constraint. We can't get it sooner than four months. And then because of, because of that, things are going to be delayed by four months. Right. And so that's then the constraint. Number one, is leading to the bottleneck formation that now we can't move ahead with the other tasks and then that's impacting the overall project schedule. So the flow of work has been impeded by that constraint. Now, you're saying, yeah, but so there's nothing you could do. Well, you can always look at things that are possible, right? And so the trousel, that's nice, it's great. Uh, but the contractor said, well, we did some research and we could get this nice two foot by two foot granite slabs and we could use that. All right. And the granite slabs, very nice, very nice granite. Uh, client looked at the granite and said, I actually like the granite better than terrazzo. And so we can actually get the granite started to be installed within two weeks. So now we're saving three and a half months. So that's the difference. You, you identified that we're constrained with this uh, terrazzo and then you looked for an alternative that the consultant and the client would agree to and the overall cost of the granite actually provided a credit to the client so you got you know things that are possible when you can especially when you can see it far out and you can take actions with it so identification of constraints is really helpful it's a lean tool that's done within the last planner system a constraint log is made uh, going out to the make ready plan six weeks you assign people to those particular constraints to see if they can make sure that those constraints don't happen or don't end up clogging up the project or if they do you reschedule the work to allow the flow to be as best as possible with as little waste as possible so you actually post it and you have a constraint log on a board where it's very visual and people are seeing it and you're pointing at it and discussing it and updating it all the time. This is being very positive and proactive in how you help to avoid the constraints to prevent bottlenecks. That would be my interpretation of that. There's different interpretations out there. But that would be, I think, the most applicable, straightforward, understandable way of connecting constraints with bottlenecks. Maybe one more to leave you with. A forming subcontractor that's overloaded with work and does not have enough forming carpenters to keep to the schedule. Now, you could say they could go out and buy, uh, go out and hire some more. Maybe in their, they're unionized and maybe at the hall they don't have any extra forming carpenters. Uh, so they may be really... Uh, constrained with that and that subsequently is going to prevent the electrical trade from putting their conduits in the walls and in the floors because the walls and the floors aren't ready. Maybe it's possible, maybe they could bring some in from another geographical location. Maybe you know you could investigate whatever the possible solutions are 
to mitigate that as much as possible ahead of time. And if you can't, then you got to schedule things that would be more appropriate to the pace that they can go at. Maybe you could also uh, partner up with another trade partner forming company that basically they share uh, some of that work, seeing they don't seem to have the capacity to be able to do it themselves. But knowing it ahead of time and working on it and trying to collaborate with everybody and getting their inputs to it can be very helpful. In another video, I think I've talked about it before, but I think in another upcoming one, I'll talk about uh, Clark Ching's The Focus Method of trying to break a bottleneck down and make sure that you've taken it from all of the angles using a framework for um, identification. Well, not so much the identification, but dealing with it. And of course, in other videos, I've talked about the five whys and really trying to get to the root cause. And that's again, you gotta understand what's the root cause? What's the constraint? that is causing this and really sort of expose that and then working out at how do we remove it? Like the Terrazzo example, you know, how do, okay, there's only these uh, contractors and they're all super busy. What, is, what else, all the other alternatives can we apply here? So that's what I wanted to cover in this session. And uh, please, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, Subscribe, it helps uh, us build the viewership and get more uh, hits and put a like there, put a comment if there's a question you have. If you have a good example of a constraint and bottleneck, put it in the chat. Uh, it's always nice to uh, see some of these questions and I try to respond to as many as I can as possible. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.